Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Cub Cooker Supernatural Podcast. My name is Jacob, but my friends call me Cub. Each day on this podcast, we talk about faith, spirituality, and the paranormal. I am so excited to be here, and we got people jumping on. Today, we're going to talk about the Book of Enoch and the star seeds that it talks about. And I'm also going to talk about um, a time when I believe that Christ himself dropped a little star seed hint. So uh, this podcast is for everyone, all walks of faith, religion, orientation, race, belief systems, as long as you're here in love and light, authentically seeking to connect with others and your deeper, higher self, then you are in the right place. What is up, Temple? How are you doing? Chris, thanks for being here. Graham, thanks for joining Josh, how are you, my friend? Thanks for joining again. Good to see you. So, Teresa, what's up? How are you doing? I've got a powerful episode for you guys today. I just want you to know I'm getting very, very deeply in touch with my primal roots, where my family comes from, uh, in deep, deep Germanic mythology, um, all of the Norse stuff, all of the mysticism. I knew I was a mystic from the day I was born. Um, the whole world was magic to me. My imagination could create anything that it wanted. And the older I get, the more I'm starting to dig into this. And while I absolutely love the Bible and biblical texts and Gnostic texts, um, I'm really just starting to get in touch with like these deeper gifts and being able to see things, being able to connect in and through nature in a way that helps me live my truth, helps me uh, unlock the universe within me and I hope you guys get what I'm talking about with that because um, I think a lot of people stumble on my channel and they think somehow this is a religious channel and I'm just here to tell you it's not I'm a mystic and a light worker uh, I'm an old soul uh, I'm an empath I'm here to help love people heal people um, and just be a light in the world and I hope that you guys realize yes I believe in magic um absolutely ellen collins thank you for being here david what is up uh david says turn up your mic david turn up your speakers um i've got the mic plugged in um talking a little quiet today it sounded really good on the test so um it's just there's no way to turn it up it's just the the, the volume of the iphone it's just on an iphone david so i'm sorry um I'll try to speak louder, see if that helps. Uh, this microphone's really hot, though, over on TikTok, so um, I need to get them all tied together. But Kimberly says it sounds fine. Yeah, so David, you might might try earbuds or something. Could be. iPhone speakers are really weak, it seems like. So uh, jo uh, Joey says your mic is good. Okay, good deal. Thank you very much. Uh, phone turned up. Okay, good deal, David. Thank you very much. Um, Ellen says sounds good on my end. Awesome. Tony, what's up, my brother? uh kyle says i'm a star seed awesome so am i man so am i um everybody says it sounds good okay good deal thank you guys i appreciate that uh just try to keep everything dialed in here so you guys have a good experience got a lot of people watching today <clears throat> i'm working with some new ai artwork in the background what i'm going to talk about today is i want you guys to realize the freaking power that's in you okay i'm just going to come out and say it like you have been lied to your entire life that, uh, you know, you've been told by Mr. Rogers when you were a kid that we're all different. We're all unique. Yeah, that's great. However, we're all one, by the way. And there is power in the one when you realize you are all one. And those of us who have been sent here or chose to come back here, uh, who have ascended, who have gotten in touch with our gifts, um star seeds indigos star kids whatever you want to call yourself hey no ma'am marvell is trying to eat the lighter for my candle that is not cool um truth that travels says amen i feel like a superwoman absolutely ma'am you are a superwoman uh, and i'm not here just to tickle your ears guys I, i'm coming into my power too and we've had a lot of people within our mythos community too, specifically talking about like heavy energy, dealing with a lot of like anger issues and depression and just anxiety and stuff right now, especially at the holidays. There's just a big mix of stuff going on. And I just want to invite you to quiet yourself, go into nature. I'm going to go into nature today. It's freezing in Amarillo, Texas. 
and I'm going to go out into nature today for at least a little bit of repose and just try to soak in the magic energy. We talk a lot about a 3D matrix a lot. We talk a lot about that, but I don't want you guys to forget that the spiritual energies within the 3D matrix are real. They're there for your benefit. The Bible, the Book of Enoch, ancient mystic texts, no matter where you look, Norse mythology, as we're going to be getting into in January, I'm doing a whole study on Norse mythology, uh, what it means to you today and how you can recover your lost magic. Um, when you go into nature, those energies are coming through the natural elements. Now, we're not like worshiping all the natural elements, but there's energy in the water. There's energy in the deer and the breath that comes out of you in, in the cold of winter. Uh, Beth says, I'm in Houston. Howdy, neighbor. What's up? Yeah, Beth, I'm over here in Amarillo, Texas uh freezing right now right next to the paladero canyon here so just learning about this and have found out i'm a star seed beth welcome uh you are welcome here mandy fay uh how do we access it great question mandy fay uh one thing is go into nature i'm going to talk today about the book of noah in the book of enoch and read directly from it I, I gotta tell you guys i'm on today i'm on fire i've got that deep soul burning right now I talked about that yesterday. If you didn't watch my Accessing Your Soul Flame video from yesterday, it's got a very, very ancient man in the background with braids and uh, antlers on a headdress, a very Nordic looking man. Um, I'm not ashamed of that stuff, guys. I'm here, that's, that's my roots, okay? So a lot of times I do these Bible characters and stuff and they look very, very Germanic, very, guys, that's literally, I mean, look at me. Uh, you know, I mean, I couldn't be paler so um just know that like that's respect and love to everyone but i just i'm not i don't i'm not connected to like some of these other traditions like i am mine especially deeply within me so i think just subliminally these things kind of come out so whenever i say oh noah i'm about to talk about noah and i'm gonna get a lot of comments and Noah wasn't white like i get it guys i get it uh this isn't noah this is like a self-portrait or whatever this is all artwork guys i mean so just think about you know what i'm talking about deeply in in your culture get in touch with your deep culture your deep roots like i go i'm on ancestry.com right now literally looking stuff up finding out that like the root core of where we come from is like right around the netherlands um and like that's where the kukar um lineage was is kind of born out of very deep germanic nordic norse paganism okay that's like that's my whole tribe okay um and and it's nothing to be ashamed of like you know i think paganism here in the west gets like a really bad rap but you guys know that i'm like a, a christian mystic so you know it's it's not like uh we're just it's not like we're just woo woo here I, I i think i can connect all these dots i really believe i can and i think that that's one of the cool things we're doing on this channel is all these different cultures all these different faiths all these different ideas it's all one it's all one and everybody has like the little pieces of it and i think that we can we can just open up and and embody this entire truth which is a global um it is a eternal it is a cosmic truth that we all embody here so um we all celebrate the pagan stemming holidays at this time absolutely rebecca i talked about yesterday you know, what's the Christmas tree about? Why do we put the red presents under it? You know, the red presents are the little fungi with the red caps on them. Uh, they're good to those who are good and they're not good to those who are naughty. You know, like you've got um, all of these, you know, different rituals and stuff that were practiced for thousands and thousands of years, pre-Christian traditions. Um, and so I like to look at like how all that connects and stuff. And I don't understand it all, but I just speak... I want you guys to know again i'm a mystic i'm a light worker i am more on the side of like the psychic prophetic that type thing um can i predict the lotto numbers no but i'm like i get how people work i get how you work i get how i work um and so like i can just speak from this deeper more eternal place and just flow on stuff i literally go live on these and I have like, I mean, I spend, you know, maybe 20 minutes, like I get the artwork ready and then the, the text that I'm going to read ready. But I could literally, you can go live on me anytime and I can just flow on it. And that that is a gift, guys. Not everybody can do that. And I'm very thankful for that. I'm not trying to prop myself up here. I'm just saying that that's one of the things I've had to come into contact with and realize that 
a lot of what I'm saying is coming from a deep ancient place. Okay. It's coming from a deep part of my soul that, you know, I'm 36, am I 36, 36, 37 years old. And I've been through a lot in my life, a lot more than most people know, but a lot of this stuff is coming from somewhere else. It's a higher intelligence. It's universal intelligence. It's downloads. It's that type of stuff. So, uh, truth of travel says it's written on your D to the N to the A. Absolutely. Um, uh, let's see, uh, Beth. Yeah. If there's anybody, uh, spamming, try, yeah, let's not do that. Um, let's see. Yeah. I don't really reread, um, comments that just drop them a hundred times in there. So, uh, let's see all of us prepared for the next. Absolutely. Um, so with that said, we're about to read from the book of Enoch and I'm going to read like the whole text here because it's really, it's deep guys. And I'm not saying this is all gospel truth. I'm saying this is an understanding of what the line of Noah, the whole Enoch, Noah, all of that is about. You guys know where I stand all that on all of that. I'm a Gnostic when it comes to the religious aspect of the biblical canon I think all the really important stuff were hidden in jars of clay. Um, we are jars of clay, by the way. But also in the Nag Hammadi Desert, you have all the Gnostic texts. I think those are some of the most important things. The Akashic Records, absolutely. Uh, we're going to do a lot more about the Akashic Records. Like, I think that we all have access to them. And a lot of times we get downloads and stuff from past lives or higher intelligence we don't really know what to call it like in a lot of these people get online and they're like this is this and that is that and so and so is telling you in this message and it's like guys i'm not that i don't get it all like that but i just i do get flow i do get downloads and that's what i try to share so but we have some of the earliest evidence here well not the earliest but biblical evidence here within the book of enoch i say biblical because it's within the church of ethiopia it's still within their bible so um, we've got, this is from the complete book of Enoch, standard English version, book two, book of the parables, chapter three, the third parable. Um, actually, let me, let me say that again. I was on the wrong page. Complete book of Enoch, standard English version, book three, book of Noah, chapter one, the birth of Noah. Okay. So this is where it gets weird guys. And a lot of people will get in here and argue with me and just say, well, uh, Noah was an albino. They didn't know what to call him. There is some next level supernatural stuff about Noah's birth in here. And if we just try to rationalize it, then we're going to miss the whole point. Because the point of this is that there are literally plants on our planet to help enlighten humanity. And we see that within the biblical record. We see that within the ancient record, uh, pre-biblical, that there are people like you and me sent to this planet who have been here before who get things who are here to help people ascend okay i am not claiming to be you know the way the truth and the life or anything that's not what i'm saying here but i'm just telling you i have had to and you may be you may have a higher intelligence telling you right now that you have gifts you have a calling you have something you need to create into and i want to tell you to listen to that guys listen to that what's up leathercraft nation how are you my friend I uh, hope you're staying warm today, brother. Uh, I wish we could play Frisbee, but maybe it's supposed to be 70 next week. So hopefully we'll get some warmer weather here. But So I just want to encourage everyone, no matter how pragmatic you are, no matter how normal your job is, no matter how normal your family is, like you may be feeling the downloads, you may be feeling the calling, you may be feeling the power and the presence within you. Like just something's not right within the 3D world and there's something more true and more ancient and more divine within you listen to that that's what i'm talking about today listen to that because i would not be here right now if i listened to all the dogma the programming and the doctrine that people drilled into my consciousness from the day i was born now you guys know i'm not a conspiratorial channel but i'm just telling you guys the matrix is set up to make sure that people drone on and on and on and on like like i am right now right uh, but that they just, they go through the motions, they're cogs in the wheel. Okay. And I've been that and I'm still a part, like I still have to make a living. I still do this full time. 
I still ask people to join my stuff. I'm still a part of the matrix, but I'm not of it. Okay. And neither are you. Okay. I'm 5d. This is 3d or I'm whatever D, you know, whatever you guys want to call it. It's a different plane of existence. And I'm literally going to read from the words of Christ today, a verse that has been misinterpreted more than any other verse, in my opinion, about what the kingdom of heaven is and about who you are. And you guys are going to love this. And I'm going to save that for the end, but I am going to read from Noah, the book of Noah right now. So chapter one, birth of Noah after some days, my son Methuselah took a wife for his son Lamech, and she became pregnant by him and bore a son. And his body was white as snow and as red as the blooming of a rose. And the hair on his head and his eyes and locks were as white as wool, and his eyes were beautiful. And when he opened his eyes, he lighted up the whole house like the sun, and the whole house was very bright." Okay, I'm going to stop right there for just two seconds. This is where a lot of people go, oh yeah, it's a baby, a baby's born, and, and they light up the house, and it's fun, and it's beautiful. What you're about to see where his father was absolutely terrified. This was not a normal birth, okay? According to this mythology, this canon, this whatever you want to consider Enoch, uh, I consider Enoch very important to my understanding of existence, okay? Amazing, Josh says. Absolutely, man. Uh, Truth that travels. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, you guys connect. Uh, Leathercraft Nation says, too cold. Absolutely. Uh, it is cold today. Very cold. It's two degrees in Amarillo today. So, uh, And thereupon he arose in the hands of the midwife, opened his mouth, and conversed with the Lord of Righteousness. So baby Noah is speaking with the Lord of Righteousness. We don't know... If the Lord of Righteousness is an angel, if it's like the Most High God, if it's uh, the E.T. God, like of the Old Testament, like we don't know, you, you know, again, I'm very much a polytheist as far as understanding that there are lots of E.T. gods, lots of these sons of God, lots of angelic entities that have been worshipped and, and, and helped humanity, but I also believe that there are star seeds that are in human clothing that are here to help humanity ascend and remember who we really are to return to divine. And that's what we're talking about today. Um, and I don't believe that all of the ET gods in the times of old were necessarily good helping humanity. I think that a lot of them wanted to be worshiped. A lot of them wanted to control. A lot of them wanted to farm and mine and do all the stuff. If you look into the Anunnaki stuff, you definitely, understand that so um josh says probably a light language yeah absolutely um with noah speaking here um i'm sure it wasn't something that they could decipher what it was so his father lamech was afraid of him and fled and came to his father methuselah so lamech was freaked out by his son being born here and you're going to you're going to see in a second he's even asking he's like hey did my wife like step out on me while I was gone like what's what's up you know cuz this is not my child so verse 5 it says and he said unto him i have begotten a strange son diverse from and unlike man and resembling the sons of god of heaven and his nature is different and he is not like us and his eyes are as the rays of the sun, and his countenance is glorious. We are dealing with an extraterrestrial book here. Let me say it again for those in the back. We are dealing with an extraterrestrial book here. What are the sons of the God of heaven, okay? Well, you might interpret them as angels, but we know for a fact that there are not like... You might see angelic things with wings and arcs of light. Those are like spirit beings. Those are the spiritual projections of these higher entities but we understand that in these ancient times they were visited by the sons of god some people in some canons called them fallen angels or angels of light or sons of god or the gods in different pantheons and they were literally from another realm they were from the stars they were from the heavens coming down upon the earth even the christmas star i'm reading through a book right now called uh the revelation of the magi i don't agree with everything from it but it's very clear in this book it was written 1700 years ago that these magi by the way there's dozens of them not just three that came to visit the christ child 
rather than the actual Christ child, this book talks about a cave of knowledge that they're recovering and that they would see the star and they would see a beam from the star as a sign pointing to the cave. Now you can take it all esoterically or you can understand that they saw things that put beams and signs upon the earth. We see the archaeological and ancient evidence of this all over the planet. Uh, if you look at uh, Pumapunku and a lot of these ancient sites, there's definitely, I mean, just watch Ancient Aliens. And I'm not saying that's like great science. I'm just saying go watch it and at least think about it and go, yeah, that's pretty weird. I don't understand how all these sites can perfectly align with the sun, the moon, and the stars, have everything like in perfect order, and I can't even get my iPhone to work. You know, like there's something's up. Something's up there. Um, so he's saying like this, uh, he, he literally is saying here, my child is an alien. My child is an ET. My child is a son of God. My child is an angel. Whatever you want to call in whatever language you use, whatever you want to call that. He's saying he's resembling the sons of God of heaven. These things that we've had experience with, um, his countenance is glorious. You know, he is a, what a shining one is what they call them. A shining one. Amen. Praise God. Eric free. What's up, brother? I miss you, man. I hope you're doing well. Uh, I bought a bunch of old books, man. They're on this shelf over here behind me. Some stuff I need to, I need to message you really, really good stuff. Um, yeah, I thought of you. I went to a really cool, uh, estate sale and, and just tons and tons of old books, really cool stuff. Yeah. I'll, I'll message you what I got. So in verse six here, it says, and it seems to me that he is not sprung from me, but from the angels. Okay. Now you may say, well, Nephilim, no, the Nephilim, the giants, those are the offspring of the angels. Well, in part of book of Enoch, we remember book of Enoch is not a cohesive document. It's not like one stream of consciousness it's a bunch of different mythologies jammed into one you know nephilim can be esoteric they could be literal they could be the union of angels that fell and and decided to sin against humanity they could be um you know we we don't know we don't know guys so it's like you have to understand that all of this stuff is not necessarily one opinion it's all coming from different angles and you have to make up what your opinion is on that so um let's see i needed to find um okay here uh nicole what is up my friend when i was nine year old nine years old i was praying and looking at the sky crying and asked god to show me something um and shown what i needed to find um a light shown and onto what i needed to find oh wow that is awesome that is awesome so see, like, I think that these angels, these sons of God are still here to help us. Like we just want to put how many people right now within the certain churchianity traditions are saying that like ETs are evil. And I just don't think that it's that simple guys, because like, where's the fruit? Where's the roots? These things are definitely of a higher existence than us. They have spiritual technology that they have to use with spiritual understanding we can't get in any of these crafts that we found and just fly them around or our body will disintegrate. So there's definitely something on another level. I don't know if they're, I don't know what they are. I don't know what they are, but definitely there's something you hear about the, the, the angels falling and creating something that was not intended in creation. But, but remember which God, which God and the God of the old Testament, the Yahweh of the old Testament has more in common with an extraterrestrial entity than he does a spiritual perfect being that Christ speaks of. That's why Christ is often referred to and, and what we do here as the Lucifer, the bringing of light against the old gods, against the old ways. Yes, multiple plans uh, we have to, and multiple planes, absolutely, Arach Free. Um, spoiler alert, an angel fell at Roswell. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, it cemented my lifelong belief in God. Nicole says that is awesome. That is awesome. Uh, Jonathan says, you're right. I was watching YouTube, uh, where there was a prophet saying that he was seeing ETs, but God confirmed. Yeah. So like, again, but just remember guys, just because it's in a biblical canon and you've got like these 66 books of the Bible does not mean that that story all goes together and you go, well, wait a minute. I've seen the thing where all the connections in the Bible, 
Yes, okay, because there are connections to everything in this world. You can literally read works by Plato, read works by Aristotle, like, and all of this stuff connects because consciousness connects. Truth is always connecting, always connecting. Yes, Hermes, absolutely. Transcend all realms, absolutely. Um, so anyway, just think, think, think about that stuff. Love, love, love you, bro, Eric. absolutely. Um, so we continue here. He says to him, I've begotten a strange son diverse from and unlike man and resembling the sons of God of heaven and his nature is different and he is not like us and his eyes are as the rays of the sun and his countenance is glorious. His eyes are as the rays of a sun. So again, he's not like just talking about, oh, he had pretty eyes. He lit up the room with his laugh and his little baby happiness. Thank you guys for the stars. By the way, the stars directly help me. I've been hit pretty hard by some of these platforms lately, especially financially. Uh, with some of their rules updates and you know things that I uh, just shared from other people years ago have gotten me in in uh, in trouble and shadow banning and stuff. So uh, nothing bad at all. It just is like they update terms and then they hold you accountable for things way way back. And as a creator, you know I've literally over on one of these platforms I've gained and lost hundreds of subscribers and like like every hour like I'll gain 500 in an hour and lose 500 gain five and it's over and over and over and it's like and then I've had people message me and say I want to follow you but the follow button's gone I can't follow you so you guys that give stars thank you Melissa oh, thank you thank you thank you you guys are way too nice uh, y'all go follow Truth that travels she is incredible um. But anyway, it, it, it's real out here for creators, guys, and uh, I'm definitely bringing a universal message of love and light, and, and I think it needs to continue getting out there. You guys know this is not a religious channel, so there's no reason, there's no reason that I should be shadow banned by any of these platforms. Um, so just keep me in your prayers, lift me up, share the content, um, you know, just, just keep these channels going. Um, and if you guys really want to support, like on a monthly level, the mythos community that we have is you can become a patron of this channel. You can get a private group with it on Facebook, a private YouTube channel, private video calls with the whole community every Saturday. Like I'm serving at a really high level. Some people just do their, their memberships and say, Oh, support me. Like I'm getting in there. We're, we're a really tight community. Uh, we're, we're going to, I'm hoping we can hit a hundred members in there by, the end of the year we're we're about halfway there now so i'm really really thankful we just hit our 50th member since i launched it like 30 days ago so thank you guys uh but get in now and you'll get a, my free book god giving gifts of brilliance um it is an audiobook you get to go through it with me and i'm going to teach you about your spiritual gifts it is fantastic like literally highly highly reviewed um, and you'll get that completely free. You can download it. I'll give you an Amazon code for that. You get to download it. It's my gift to you saying thank you for joining me before before the year is over, if you join before uh, January 1st. So uh, go check that out. Nine bucks a month. It's called the Mythos Supporter Community. It's on my website, www.cubcooker.com. I am promoting because I'm trying to limit uh, ads and, and monetization from the platforms on my channels because they've been so inconsistent and they hit me with this and that. And the best way to support is directly through what we're doing in that community. So thank you. Thank you. I've got a lot of Mythos members here this morning. Mythos members are highly involved in what we're doing. They're working on themselves every day. They believe that there is something within them greater than what they've been told and they are here to seek the authentic reality and truth, dis detached from doctrine and dogma in a way that is loving and beautiful for all of humanity, serving self and others in a beautiful way. I love you guys. Thank you for being here. Yes, family. Family Truth That Travel says, absolutely. Uh, Arox says, amen. I like it. Thank you, brother. So as we get into this, Missy, what's up, my friend? I hope you're doing well. Uh, sending much love and support. Thank you, Voxter. I really appreciate you guys. Good, good stream this morning. Really, really pumping it here. Thank you guys. I really appreciate it. All the likes and the stars and everything really, really helped. Thank you guys. 
Okay, so it seems to me that he is not sprung from me, but from the angels. This is Noah's father talking. And I fear that in, in his days, a wonder may be wrought on the earth. This is like a weird thing to say. Uh, like, basically, I think what Noah's dad is saying here is like, he's probably born for a reason. And I think something big is going to happen that he needs to be here for. And so it's kind of like this prophetic word at that moment here. I fear his in his days a wonder may be wrought on the earth. By the way, raise your hand if you've never heard this story before. Uh, raise your hand if you've heard uh, the biblical Noah account with the flood and everything. Um, and, and you've never heard about little baby alien star seed indigo child Noah. Uh, I know I haven't. But this is fascinating. So we know there's more truth. We will get there. Amen. White House uh, 840. Thank you very much. Martin, welcome, my friend. Um, so he's saying like, hey, I think something's coming. Uh, and now, my father, I am here to petition thee and implore thee that thou mayest go to Enoch, our father, and learn from him the truth, for his dwelling place is amongst the angels. <laughs> Where is Enoch? He's living on a starship with these angels, okay? I don't know how to tell you guys. Like, you may say, oh, I don't believe in aliens. That's fine, okay? Well, he's definitely living somewhere else. He's not living on the 3D plane here. He's not living like, like there's something different going on here. His dwelling place is amongst the angels, okay? And if you study what angels really are, you you understand you know, Noah's, Noah's getting to travel. This is like flight of the navigator stuff here. You know, I don't know where he's at, but they're going to go find him. They're going to go to him. Absolutely. Josh says fantastic. Absolutely. Um, so verse seven, and when Methuselah heard the words of his son, so Methuselah is Noah's grandfather. Remember this. I'm just trying to give you guys the line here. He came to me to the ends of the earth for he had heard that I was there and he cried aloud and I heard his voice and I came to him. Where are the ends of the earth? Like, why, why is he going here? Oh, this is just a mythology. It's not literal. Well, I get that. I get that. And I do believe that this is a mythology, but where are the ends of the earth, especially within their mind? The ends of the earth are going to be somewhere where the earth is ending and the sky is beginning. So how is Enoch living off the ends of the earth here okay that's what we're about to find out um and this is not about round versus flat all that bs guys i'm not talking about that if you're into that that's fine i just don't get into that because i literally think that we manifest what our planet is even like i think that we have so much like you talk to anybody that's on either side and they have proofs and they believe it and they can see it they literally see it within their timeline and I'm just telling you guys, like, don't argue about that, but just think about where is this guy at? Where is Enoch at? All the way from South Africa, Martin. Thank you for being here, my friend. Um, so, ends of the earth. For he had heard that he was there, and he cried aloud, and I heard his voice, and I came to him. So, he had to go to the ends of the earth and cry out aloud, and Enoch hears him and, and then goes to him. And I don't think he's like in a cave, you know, at the end of the road or anything like that. I think it's something deeper, something more fantastical. Uh, who else is in the mythos community here? Truth That Travels says. We got Annie, Jason. What's up, Jason? Uh, who else do we have? We had a bunch of others a minute ago. Uh, Lynn. We've got Missy. We've got uh, who else do we have? I saw others. Yeah, we've got like 10 Mythos members in here today. So thank you guys for being here. Um, uh, Seerside says, what is the Mythos community? So it's basically my patron community. Like it's nine bucks a month. Uh, we just are in a, a private group. We've got a private Facebook group. We've got a private YouTube channel that I upload a ton of my teachings to that are not public. Um, and then we get on a live video call like where we can talk to each other face to face every Saturday. And so it's just a really cool thing. It's a monthly membership, just going deeper into the community, supporting what I'm doing. But I'm just really, really involved within the Mythos community because there's a lot less people there and we can just really work together more intimately as a community on all these things that we talk about, support each other, um, and just kind of get behind this one mission of dissolving dogma 
finding the authentic reality, contacting our higher self, um, and understanding who the true fractal nature and mind of God actually is, what the awesome message of Christ actually was, completely detached from the religious message, but I'm going to share what that is here in a second. Really, really cool. So, um, so yeah, Noah's dad is like freaking out. And then verse eight, it says, I said to him, behold, I am here and my son, wherefore hast thou come to me? And he answered and said, because of a great cause of anxiety has come to thee. And because of a disturbing vision have I approached. So now he's saying it's a vision. Like, is it a vision that he had about this, his son or is it literal? I mean, I think the mythology is talking about it literally is what I'm trying to say. Truth That Travels says, join if you love Cubs content uh, and need people who can relate to your spiritual journey. It's awesome. Thank you, Truth That Travels. Y'all go follow her. God bless you, my friend. I love I love uh, that you advocate for what we're doing. Thank you so much. Um, and then in 9, uh, or excuse me, in 10, it says, And now my father, hear me unto Lamech, my son. There hath been born a son. And like that of whom there is none, and his nature is not like the man's nature. And the color of his body is whiter than snow and redder than the bloom of a rose. And the hair on his head is whiter than white wool. The kid has hair already. I mean, and his eyes are like the rays of the sun. And he opened his eyes and thereupon lighted up the whole house. Then in 11, it says, and he arose into the hands of the midwife and opened his mouth and blessed the Lord of heaven. Now he's blessing the Lord of heaven. And his father Lamech became afraid and fled to me and did not believe that he was sprung from him, but that he was in the likeness of the angels of heaven. So you're getting better explanation here. It's just expounding upon it. The angels of heaven now. It said sons of God a minute ago, angels of heaven now. You can replace it with the extraterrestrials. Um, because that really is the definition, guys. They're not from around here. Uh, and behold, I have come to thee, and thou mayest make known to me the truth. And I, Enoch, answered and said unto him, The Lord will do a new thing on the earth, and this I have already seen in a vision, and make known to thee that in the generation of my father Jared, some of the angels of heaven transgressed the word of the Lord. And behold, they commit sin and transgress the law and have united themselves with women and commit sin with them and have married some of them and begot children with them. And they shall produce on the earth giants, not according to the spirit, but according to the flesh. Okay, so we're, this is a, what's about to happen here. What's about to happen here. So he's saying not, hey, I think my son is the offspring of this unholy union, but I think my son is an actual shining one. He's actually from another place. And I'm going to stop there and finish this Book of Enoch this afternoon, because right now I want to read, and I'm going to read this on both episodes, but i got to read this, Matthew 4, 17. This is where Jesus is saying, From that time Jesus began to preach, Repent for the kingdom of of heaven is near now how have you been lied to about what this means now is there a nefarious plan to lie to you no i'm not saying that i'm just saying i've taken a ton of pastors trainings i've been mentored like i understand what it looks like within the church tradition to get programmed away from this deeper esoteric understanding so what is christ saying here jesus Liesus is actually what this is in the Greek. And we're going to look at his name first off because that's important here. Eesus is how you say it. E-E-A-Y-S-O-O-C-E. -E -E. That's where you get Jesus. The transliteration is L-E-S-O-U-S. -E but you say it Eesus. Okay. Eesus. What is Eesus? He is us. Eesus. He is us. Okay. I've been saying this. Say it for those in the back. He is us. Okay. Why did he call himself the son of man, the son of man, the son of man? Because if you look up the son of man in the Greek, it is the son or the daughter, the offspring of humanity is what it is. Humanity. This is literally saying humanity. That's what I believe. You don't have to believe me, but you can go look it up for yourself on Bible Hub. Go look at the Greek in any verse. 
decipher it for yourself. Quit letting other people do it for you. He began to preach. Repent. What does repent mean to you? Drop it in the comments. What does repent mean to you? Because I'm, I can almost guarantee you that what it means to you is not what it means in the text. And it is not what you hear from the pulpit. It is not what I thought it was until a week ago. Forgiveness, vibrating goddess says. Uh, of everyone and yourself. Good. Transforming of the mind. Missy, you're very, very close. Very good, Missy. Change your mind, Josh says. Yes. Okay. Good. You guys are getting it. Good, good, good. Uh, turn away from your sins, Richard. That's a very church. Like, But that's what I thought. But here, here's what this is, okay? What is sin? Sin is that thing that separates you from God. What is it? Liter like, literally, what is sin is you are out of vibration with the creator okay that is what actual sin is but right here the word repent is from strong's 3340 go look it up don't take my word for it it is from uh meta okay from the word meta okay you guys hear about all the meta verse what is that it says to think differently to think differently okay so the word repent Jesus is literally saying here, think differently. It says to change one's mind or purpose. Okay, so what is this? Think differently. Raise your consciousness. Become conscious of the kingdom. What is the kingdom here? Basalia, okay? The proper royalty or realm. So he's saying think differently. For the realm of heaven. What is heaven? Oreos or Oranon. Strong's 3772. By extension, heaven. By implication, happiness, power, eternity. Okay? So think differently. For the realm of happiness, power, eternity is near. And what does this mean is near? It says, I bring near, I come near, and I approach. To make near or to come near is the actual definition here. So, let me retranslate this for everybody. What is Jesus saying here? He's saying, raise your consciousness for the realm of the universe is within you. It has been made near. It is here. And there are literally other times where he says this when the actual translation is the kingdom of God is within you. Okay. This is multiple times in the Bible and in the Gnostic Gospels. So this is just one example from Matthew 4.17. But we can find it in a lot, a lot of other verses where it's not uh, Ingekin, uh where it says is near, it says is within, literally within, within you. So raise your consciousness and be aware that the realm of the universe is within you. This is incredible, K Ween says. Absolutely. Hunter Mike says, thank you. Absolutely. Missy Bemis, boom, boom, boom. Absolutely. Andrea says, that is amazing. Um, dude, major downloads. Absolutely, Melissa. Um, I love that Melissa's on both platforms. She's just like rocking it. Well, you got two iPhones there just dropping truth that travels here. I mean, thank you. Uh, Christ consciousness. Absolutely. So don't miss what he's saying here. And do not let when you go to church, because, you know, go to church, do whatever you're going to do on Christmas. But you're going to get told a base interpretation. Go deeper. Go within. Vibrating goddess is mind blown. Absolutely. Go within. Raise your consciousness for the universe is within you. The divine computation, the logos, the word of God is within you guys. It's the same message every time Jesus speaks. And what did we do? We took it. We changed it. People around his time weren't getting it. They took it. They changed it. They focused it on him rather than the message. Why do I love Christ? Because of his message. 
there's so much debate on did he die? Didn't he die? Was he born a virgin? Was he not? I don't care about any of that. I literally don't. I care about the message because the message he gave is why he came. Christ the star seed. Christ the ultimate star seed with the fullness and the full understanding, the highest ascension of God within came to enlighten us. And yet people like Noah here, a star child, coming into a very turbulent time in human history and mythology to do what? To deliver humanity. And guys, it's the story of us. That's what we're called to do. All of this happens esoterically within self. If you feel called, if you feel like you want to bring light to people, you want to heal people, you want to help people, your heart bleeds and hurts and goes out. Vibrating Goddess says, uh, yes, the truth is not what we've been taught. I know that, especially within, uh, yeah, okay. And if that's where you come from, I totally understand. I've got a lot of friends that are of that tradition. Um, and again, I'm not here to tell anyone to change your tradition, but just open your mind. Let the lotus flower of the mind open and let the universal intelligence fill you because God is within you. You are an indigo child. You are a star seed. You have a purpose here, and if you're getting what I'm talking about, you were sent here for a reason. Uh, Searside says, I was raised that way too. Awesome. Yeah, that's, um, you guys connect then, definitely. Uh, I love watching people connect in here, so thank you guys for being here. Yes, chakras, absolutely. Uh, Co-creating your reality with the creator of the universe, absolutely. Now remember, in the Old Testament, the Yahweh character, that God, that E.T., type God, this is where my message is different from a lot of people. Like, again, I love you. If you're, if you're Hebrew roots or anything like that, I love you. But just think about like, he's in darkness, he's in smoke, he's in fire on Mount Sinai. You've got this old law being given, which was only sin and death. You have basically enslavement by this ET God. And then you have Christ bringing, that's why I'm a Marcionite, Marcion of Penope. I've talked about him before. Um, Marciona Panope was someone who had one of the first, you know, spiritual records of the words of Christ. He was in the time of Paul. He preached that Christ was speaking of a new God, a spirit God that nobody had touched or seen, but that God was within, that God was new, that God was a part of everything. Yes, absolutely vibrating goddess, uh, two gods. Actually, lots and lots of little g-gods. But yeah, there's one that we focus a lot on, that one E.T. God being Yahweh in the Old Testament. And then, yes, a creator. Because in Genesis 1, it says Elohim. It's a plural, spiritual creator, feminine and masculine together. We were created not as two different sexes, but as feminine and masculine light beings in Genesis 1. In Genesis 2, Yahweh comes on the scene. He takes that that was created and makes... Genesis 2 does not say created. He is the maker. That's where, and if you read, go into the Strong's, you can look at the Hebrew, understand that word is make, not create, that Yahweh did. Okay, he made out of, and he put into clay the essence, the light being that God the Father, the spiritual truth and enlightenment, the fractal mind of God, creator of all the energies in the universe, and then Yahweh put the skin over it like you would put a skin on a car of the flesh, of the physical reality, the lowered vibration of all the matter that we see, we perceive to be real in the 3D matrix, was made by that creator God or that maker God, Yahweh. That's a Gnostic interpretation and my loose understanding of all of that. And I say loose because I, I've, I've read a lot of mythologies and a lot of different traditions from Egyptian, Sumerian, Canaanites, Biblical Hebrew. Um, we're going to be doing Norse in, in the winter here in January and probably February. And guys, it's all saying the same things. There's these little G-gods, these sons of gods that are coming down. And you've got this creator, El Elyon, the most high right. Yes, absolutely, Hunter. El, El, you guys ever see El, Tower of Bab El? The Tower of Babel was the gate of El. People were ascending, returning to El, and having the gnosis and the enlightenment of 
their divine being within and who tore it down and who scattered and who created confusion. But then Christ says, God, or I think it's Paul says, God is not the author of confusion. Yet Yahweh was the author of confusion in that. I've got dozens of them, guys. I've dozens of these verses that connect. Um, and I'm going to continue working on it until I have hundreds. And then I'm going to give them to you guys. Um, but it's crazy. It's crazy. So just think about, like, you know, how do you go out into nature and everything and enjoy it knowing it's a 3D matrix? Because of all the spirit energies coming through it. Well, I thought we weren't supposed to, the elemental spirits, and the Bible says that, yeah, well, which God said don't, don't interact with elemental spirits. Don't do magic. Because all of that was considered heresy, because it was against Yahweh, because the ET God wanted to keep people enslaved under him, go to him, bring the sacrifice, gold, virgins, unalived animals, everything that that, entity needed to live on our planet and control our planet and if you look into the whole Sumerian thing in the Anunnaki you get a whole different understanding whole different understanding so uh, I'm having contact with planets uh, I know how it sounds but I'm looking for answers Jupiter and Mars mostly okay yeah so here check this guys even our Sun is like a physical entity within our universe right and we can see our universe is like this incredible vast thing. But understand the energy that comes from these things. The energy and the hums and the vibrations from planets. The light given off from them. Everything is an energetic truth masked in a low vibration 3D lie. So if you're here, like you, you, you get those things, the vibrations. I do the sun gazing thing, you know, not to burn my eyes out. But I was looking under it today and I can see... You know, just for a few seconds and you see all the different colors and these high level clouds that are up there and you're getting all the light codes from it. People that, that can hear the vibrations of the earth. All of creation groans to return to L. Remember that. I'm preaching today, guys. We got to do it. Somebody's got to do it. So finally, someone thinks like me. Tony says, absolutely. As I bash the microphone here. Um... Yeah, absolutely. Israel. I-S for eyes. Ra for sun god. L for Lucifer. Absolutely. Um, and that's, you know, well, and Isis. Isis is the, the god Isis. Ra, the sun god. Um, and then L, Lucifer. And, th and that can be interpreted a lot, of way a lot of ways. I see, because Christ said, when I'm in the world, I'm the light of the world. So for me, Ra is Christ. Isis is the mother. And L is the most high. And that's kind of how I how I view it. Or yeah, I mean to me Lucifer is raw, but that's again, you can you can interpret that however you want. Because I'm not here to tell you guys exactly. I'm just here to open up your flower of your mind, get you thinking. You're gonna see things, you're gonna hear things, you're gonna connect things. Because I can't I can't just give you the knowledge and say this is true because I'm always evolving and understanding things differently and that's why i love what i do on this channel i can just flow on it we all come into new understanding and you guys go listen to what i did you know six months ago and it's a different vibe than it is now and i hope it's a, d a different vibe in another six months if it's not then i'm not ascending i'm not filling into my purpose i'm not able to burn through the karma and the dogma and the doctrine and all the limiting things that are entrapping me within the 3d matrix so Amen, brother. Never ending seek for the truth. Truth that travels. Absolutely. Missy, thank you for being here. Josh, thanks for being here. Nightingale, thanks for being here. Vibration uh, or vibrating goodness, thank you for being here. Thank you guys over on Facebook. Um, Yasan, thanks for being here. Tony, thanks for being here. I love you guys. I hope you have an awesome day. 3 p.m. Central Standard Time right here live. Facebook, TikTok. You can catch the restream of this over on YouTube um same day i post everything the same day so later tonight you'll see all of this on youtube as well as spotify anchor apple podcasts everything i'm even on video podcast over there now everything's over at cubcooker.com or stand.store slash cubcooker those are my only two urls you can go support me there and join the mythos group so we can go deeper together or you can just hit up like all of my socials. Make sure you follow me on everything so you don't miss a beat or do all of it. Also, I have the t-shirts if you like my artwork. There's two t-shirts two right now on the drop. We have 
the uh, the awakening Christ with the blue eyes of Christ, and then I have the ancient um, the the soul fire shirt from yesterday, and I've got more shirts coming. But I got a brand new art style. That's another great way you can support what I'm doing. I've lowered the price of shirts, and you can get free shipping right now. The codes at the top. Those are all the ways you can support me. I've got to do that so I can keep showing up here. I do this full time, and I really appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Keep spreading light, brother. Josh says I appreciate that. Uh, new Earth will be beautiful, full of love and light. Amen, amen, amen. Oh, nice TikTok game player. Thank you, guys, for the gifts. God bless you, guys. Uh, don't miss me today at 3. It's going to be good if I can knock, knock my coffee over here. Uh, but I'm going to finish the rest of this Noah birth story. Talk more about star seeds. How do you activate all of this? How can we keep going down the rabbit hole together? I love you guys. I love you. I love you. I love you. Namaste. The divine, the star seed in me recognizes the star seed in you. Y'all be beautiful. Go bless someone today. Love people. As you go into the holidays, I know it's it's tough energy right now. But watch my soul fire video from yesterday. It's over on YouTube right now. Really deep stuff. Really will help you through the holidays with family. So I love you guys. Y'all have a beautiful day. Peace.